Yeah. Um, door is shut and she's in there for Um, so please uh, do not have to of uh, Sorry. Sorry about that for anybody out there in fact um, watching. We have just um, trying mics out at the moment because we have got this screen up and we do just want to make sure everybody hear us and hear what's, what is happening. That's why we are just trying things out. We tried the my other one out before it did work, but at the moment something's gone wrong with the lead. So don't forget live stream is on a Wednesday and um, um, when the service started at 7 o'clock. Um, it was question and answers, but I think we're moving on to something else um, at this time. So please um, do, um, do uh, that if you cannot turn up. Events coming up, 15th of um, August, church picnics. Church picnics will be here. Time is 1 o'clock here at the church. And, and um, please... Bring your own whatever you want to eat. Yeah, bring your own, and we have the picnic here on site. The reason why we say bring your own because of um, going on, we do not want to um, do anything to upset anybody. We'll provide, we'll have plastic throwaway cups, so we'll provide. So please, please support us on that here on site. Also, Prayer request, prayer request. Do pray for Kevin Pine and his family. They are back in the state. They'll be there for, there for, um, for a good 12 months. And not only they'll be there, we'll be trying to take care of their work here, here as well on a Sunday afternoon, on a Wednesday. So do pr pray for um, New Life Baptist Church so, we could, um, so they could continue. Do pray for TJ and his family also over there in um, Spain, because Spain is um, going through difficulties at this moment. Do pray for members of the church. Do pray for Maureen. I know Maureen is probably watching now with um, Sister Lorraine, so please pray for Maureen. Pray also for Rita. Rita is still, she's at home, she's not well, and I know even if she was to be watching, she wouldn't be able to see because it would be it would be a bit of a um, struggle for if she does if she does struggle to actually see. So do pray for Maureen. Do pray for myself and my family, and so we could actually um, move on. There's times we are we still suffering. We still suffering. At time to grieve, as the way we should, because there is other things which is happening. Not just other things which is happening. There is, um, I just, uh, just also over the last week and a half, lost an auntie. Oak. She was um, 93. So do pray for, for my family also. And he's going through a lot at the moment because his granddad has um, got um, stage three cancer. So do pray for 
Cameron, he's suffering, but is that saying too much? Losing one granddad and then going to lose the next. Yeah, so. And do pray for any other members of the church. As I said, things is slightly different. We've got a screen up. We do not sing anymore in which that is something I miss. I like the singing. We do not sing anymore. We do not shake hands anymore. We do not hug anymore. I do not like this elbow business. I can't take it. I'll be honest, I can't take the elbow, can't take I like to give a good squeeze and give a good handshake. And when it comes to the elbow, I prefer not to just, I prefer just do nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, I just can't take the elbow, elbow business. But you know something, we are here to worship the Lord. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, again for this time, we thank you for the time you've given us, my Father. We just thank you for what you just continue to do for us. Father, we know this is times, the times in which is struggle, times which is, which is strange, times which is new for each and every one of us, my Father. But Father, I know nothing changed when it comes to worship you. Nothing changed in your words. Nothing changed about you. Today, today, and you will be also the same tomorrow. My Father, may this service be a blessing to you. May this service lift you up also, my Father. May it only lift you up. May it only praise your name. And we ask all this in thy holy, precious name. Amen. As I said, it's a time of change. Time of change all round. One of the strangest things for me, when you, uh, not for me, for everybody, when you go into town, you've got a queue to go everywhere. That is so strange. When I, when my, myself and my wife, we usually go shopping on a Saturday. At a bed because I'm an early riser. Um, we usually finish by 12 o'clock. Yeah, and back home we could relax, we could do everything we need to do. Now it's taking us all three, two, three o'clock before we finish, depending where you got to go. Yesterday we didn't have, we haven't been to Asda as yet, but we still did not finish our shopping until three o'clock. And we still have not been to Asda. So anybody wants to do Asda shopping for us, you're quite welcome. <laughs> it's times of change. If you notice, when we begin a service, we begin with the notices. We, although we always, no, we don't always do, we do songs and worship, and sometimes we change it around, but we begin with the notices. And then we are moving straight in to the word of God, to preaching. It's so much, so much of a change. The praises through songs has moved. There's rules we've got to follow. There's rules we've got to follow. One of the rules is, which, is, which came out um, over a week ago, probably a week and a day ago, is you come in churches, in buildings, you've got to wear a face mask. I struggle with it through my asthma. I struggle to go into shops and wear the mask because I feel it's just stifling me. Half the time, putting it back up because I'm struggling through my asthma. But it's times, these times we've got to follow the rules. Churches has got to follow the rules. We, as Christians, also have got to follow those rules. And you know something as well, my brothers and sisters? One of the rules is we've got to read our Bible. Regular read the basics in the Bible. Because we'll never know the truth unless we start to read and grow into the truth. 
The only way we know the truth is by going to the word of God. In a, in a research about a year and a half ago, about churchgoers. Less than 50% open up. 82% think that God helped them that helped them. You know something? More men in the streets also think that. 63% cannot even name the four Gospels in the Bible. Fifty-eight percent does not know that the Sermon on the Mount was preached by Jesus. Over half does not know Jonah is a book in the Bible. This is a big one. Over 50% of Christian does not know the soul for Christ. Does not know how to win a soul for Christ. The minute they find somebody who needs Christ, you know what they do? Call the pastor. I had a text some week ago. And I never seen it, I never seen the text for about a month after the person sent it. I do not, I'm not a text person, so sometimes I do not look in message and look in the junk and to find these things. And when I text a person, the person said, oh, my friend wanted to know more about, about Christ. But I had to get somebody else because he never get back to me. This person supposed to be a Christian. Supposed to be a Christian. This is something I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to work on getting small groups together and do little session and out souls for Christ. I'm trying to do a little workshop together then invite people, not the way it was done, not the way, do you want to come? I am going to Pacific groups, invite them, let them make that time, and then I'll sit down with that group. When we go through it, I'll go to another group and make them make that time and how to win soul for Christ. This is something we should all know. Something we should not be frightened of. When I went through this, it remind me, remind me of a story I heard or a book I've read some time ago. Air travel. Air travel is something we'd like to travel, but there's sometimes we just don't like to go on that plane. Because when it's up in the air, we got no control. My son went to Holland last weekend, John. We, I begged him not to go because of the, current, um, the current climate, but he said, Dad, I'm going. I've never been in a plane, I'm going. Yeah. Then he comes back and he said, it was great, but I've got no control when I'm in the plane. I've got no control over nothing. Somebody else has got control. This woman went on a plane. She traveled regular. She went on the plane and she always brings a Bible always want to be in the word and this occasion she, she sat, sat next to a gentleman and the gentleman started making funny noises and stuff like that. the lady said what's the matter he said yes because it tells me about my life it tells me how to live my life 
what I should do in my life. It's a guide for my life. Yes, I do believe in it. He sniggers and he start going on. And then he said, what about that man who was swallowed by a whale? How did he survive? The woman turned and said, well, I will ask him when I get to heaven. The man said, what if he is not in heaven? He said, then you ask him when you get to the other side. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, believe in the word of God. Over the weeks, over the weeks, we've learned to grow spiritually. Spiritually, and we have got to grow spiritually. We have got to be in uh, in the word of God we've got to read that's the only way we are going to grow I'm going to tell you it's not automatic not when you receive Christ not when you are baptized it is not automatic a lot of Christian thinks it's the minute they receive Christ they know everything I'm telling you you don't they're still learning they're still reading, you've got to do. As pastors here at Temple Baptist Church, we preach the word. And we like to give you the word and growing you in the faith. Today, I'm going to put th certain things together in which we preach. And a statement I'm going to put together pastors preach and it's just a statement I get from everybody since we have locked down and I've listened to the word in which they preach every word and it's like this the statement is it is impossible to grow in your relationship with God without growing in your relationship with the word of God you want me to repeat that again? It is impossible to grow in your relationship with God without growing in your relationship with the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, it's so true. You have got to be in. The sermon is called Feeding Yourself. Feeding yourself with the Word of God. Feeding yourself, longing for the word, longing for the word in which the Lord has given us. Our passage is taken from 1 Peter 2, verse 2. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. One Peter two verse two, as a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow. That he may grow. The king, king, the, um, way like a new babe, new brave for spiritual milk. Brothers and sisters, if you want to. You must get in the word of God. You must crave for it. Just like a new ba newborn babe, we must long after, the, long after the word which the Lord has given us. Many times, oh, many, many times, <clears throat> as, as Christians, we think everything I know is in the Bible until somebody says something. Until somebody on the street said, can you show me? And they come. Somebody said that to me a week ago. Can you show me where he said something about um, gays and lesbians? Can you show me something 
That's how I can't find it. I've asked my pastor and he said he can't find it. You know what I did? He said, you've got to know your scripture. He said, so why didn't his pastor know it? I said, I don't know. I'm not your pastor. Yeah. You have got to know the word of God. You have got to know where to go in times like this. I like the way Job put it. I like the way Job put it in the book of Job 23 verse 12. Either have I gone back from my commandment. He hasn't gone back to it. He knows his commandment. He's living with it. In him. It's necessary for food. It's a treasure for food. The treasure, the treasure is like daily bread. When you are in God's word, it's like a daily bread. You're constantly eating, constantly feeding off. Brothers and sisters, we have got to be in his word. When we are preaching over the world, we're preaching God's word, preaching how to be in God's word, how to take care of yourself in God's word. We must de desire his word. We must be always wanting his word because it does not come automatically. I'm going to ask a question. Please do not put your hands up. You do not need to put your hands up because you should know it in yourself. How many of us do a daily reading every day? How many of us do a daily reading that's opening your Bible, that's wanting his word? He does it. Many Christians are spiritually half starving God's word. We must know what the Lord is saying. We must. Of his word. It's impossible to grow. It's impossible to grow without growing in his word. Brothers and sisters, are we struggling? Are we struggling? Some of us know what, but we do not know how. We know we are struggling in certain areas, but we do not know where to get it. Before you feel guilty, my brothers, before you feel guilty, let's spend a few minutes God's word. I was asked an honest question. Someone asked me an honest question. I crave for spiritual milk. They asked a couple of questions. Here's another one. Determined to do better. Determined to do better. But after I leave, I forget what I want. And we all does it. How do I be like other people always in the world? I need to. Do you know you could tell the difference with people who come on a Sunday evening and a Wednesday? You could tell about the Bible and the way they give their self about the Bible there's a big difference we went to a church with Pastor and Mrs. Chris, myself and my wife went to a church with, pa to, with Pastor and Mrs. over there in Stillwater, USA on a Wednesday night Pastor was presenting his work on this um, Wednesday night and um, when we got there the church just starting to fill up because we got there a little bit early and you know something by the time the church start and we look round 
the church was full like it was a Sunday morning. I could not believe it. It's only a Wednesday. Because knowing, knowing, We need to crave for the word. Brother Paul did a lesson some time ago on craving for the word. Child of God, born again, are you in God's word? This passage gives me three ways to start craving for the word. Started in verse 2. Because church at this moment is working kind of backwards. We, we give the notice, then we preach, then we go home. It's a different order of doing things. So why can't I have a different order in reading the scriptures also and delivering the scripture? I figure I, would, I could do that as well. Remember your salvation. Remember your salvation, my brothers and sisters. In 1 Peter 2, one Peter 2, verse 1, start with, or mean, we need to go back and look what, about what this wherefore stand for. We need to look Out. Let's go back to 1 Peter 1 verse 23. You don't flick a page, you just turn your eyes and look up. Anybody don't know where Peter is? It's um, towards the back of the book. Back of your Bible. 1 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth for Ever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of men as like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and it then the flowers therefore falleth away. But the word of endureth forever. And this is the word which I sorry, which by the gospel is preached unto you. Three verses. Three verses. It keeps us out of trouble. That's one of the biggest things I find. It keeps us out of trouble. The minute I go anywhere and I'm going to open my mouth and say something, word, because it calms me down. It keeps us in our places where you are in God's word. You are doing nothing wrong. When you are in God's word, you are doing Three times in the verse we read, the primary word is... is um, the prim- of the word 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 born again not of corruptible seed by the word of God by the word of God. but the word of the Lord endureth forever This is the word we preach unto you. There's sometimes you speak to your children. I see some of us got our children here, here at this moment. <clears throat> sometimes when we speak to our children, you keep going over the same thing over and over. Shaking her head, yes, I've done it with my daughter and I'm still doing it now. Yeah? <laughs> But you know, so on it. I've kids speak to them. Then I tell them the same thing again. Then later on, I tell them the same thing. Then you know. Yeah. 
reason of uh, you doing this? For what reason? The Lord has done the same thing. To make sure you are listening and you're understanding the word. The word is being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. By the word of God. By the word of the Lord endures forever. You see, it's always when the Lord means something, want you to understand, he repeat it over. Privilege some time ago. I have the privilege of leading some people to the Lord. Some, some people to the Lord. And on both occasion, both occasion, I asked them, And both, I said, could you say it a little louder? Both occasions, they said it a little louder. Then I said, I want to read you. This is the day of your spiritual birth. This is the day of your spiritual birth. Friend, I don't feel dry when you're you are in a situation. I don't know what you to and I want you to go to that new date of your birth. That when you first receive the Lord, the Lord word. And when it helps you to grow, you go back to that time. The word oh, and sustain you on earth when you became born again. When you are in his words, brothers and sisters, to that. It will, it will sustain you. Number two, if we cannot read our Bible and we cannot get down into sin from your life, Move the rest of verse 1. Let's check out the rest of 1. Wherefore, laying aside all and all, all, all envy and all evil speaking, rid yourself of the malice. Rid yourself all the dis deceit and hypocrisy which is in your life, the envy and slander, all kind, stop you growing, growing in his word. It's a growth stopper. It's quite not craving for the word, it's because you got some of these words. When you eat junk food, it shows. When you eat junk food, it shows. If you don't eat junk food, you look at fist and muscular like me. <laughs> the church is laughing. Eh? Members out there in the States, the church is laughing because they said I'm not fit and muscular. Yeah? But you know something, when you eat junk food, it shows. Junk food is up. The junk when you need the proper food. In healthy food, you cannot take it, you start aching. One of the things always young people always say this I do not eat breakfast. I do not eat breakfast. Because it does not, um, they say things, because it'll make me sick. I do not eat breakfast. When mommy and daddy was feeding you breakfast, days, they got before you. 
and you'll get up and you'll eat it because it'll wake you up because you know you gotta get you become lazy and you want to leave it for the last minute. So you said, I do not eat breakfast. Lazy to get up and prepare your breakfast. Because you are not feeding yourself what you need. Peter knows. Peter knows this. That's why he said, when you're sitting on the beach, eating junk in your life, get rid of it. When you're sitting on the beach, get rid of the junk. Disregard all, all spoiled, spoiled clothes. Get rid of it. Way, cast away all dignitation. Christian, when they was baptized, water. When they come out, they will put on a brand new, clean clothes. Brand new, clean clothes. I had the privilege of baptizing a young lady here. The privilege of baptizing a young lady. And she told me, leave it, Pastor Danny, I've got to get myself an outfit. I'm thinking, what for? She said, Danny, when I come out that water, that outfit has got to be brand new not being worn before. I'm casting away all the old stuff. So I'm putting on a new garment, a new me. Because when it says, yeah, when you come, go down, then you come out, you're walking in newness of life. So she wants everything to start afresh. I said to myself, not to her, well, You're only young and you're thinking that way because she has been in the word. She's cast away. Tell us five things. Five things including attitude, actions, which destroyed the community, destroy your fellowship with each other. Five things, Elise. Or with the word all starting with it. All malice. All malice. But he said, lay aside all malice. But malice, put it aside. He said to me yesterday, I was driving, he said to me, You argue with them all. Listen. Isn't that right, Jamie? Yeah, they don't listen. The Greeks haven't got no sister, so you wouldn't know. Eh? They don't listen. So you, you argue with But yet, you're talking so good. I said, do not keep malice. And I'm telling you, do not keep malice to your sister. What? Next minute, Talk to each other. Yeah? It this mean evil spiritness in people. You do not keep malice with anybody. All guile, all deceit it in people and telling and telling them all deceit, deliberate lies, misleading people. You do not do that. And hypocrisy. Envy. Envy. Envy is a big one. Do not want what he's got. In my country, I don't know about um, um, other countries, but in my country, we call it red eye. Yeah? You, want, you see something, somebody got your red eye, you want it. Yeah? Do not 
want what people's got. Yeah? Be satisfied with what the Lord has given you. Be satisfied. Do not slander people. Do not speak unkind words about anybody. Do not run them down. Do not backbite them. Brothers and sisters, that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying here, my brothers and sisters, lay aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisy, all envy, all evil speaking, lay it aside. That's what we need to do. Lay aside all these things. It's quite possible the reason why you are not you are stalling in your spiritual life, the reason why you're stalling in reading the reading the word of God is because you have some of these in your life. According to another survey I read, the main reason behind why Christians stall pre, um, spiritually are gossip. Judging others, gambling, alcohol, pornography, inappropriate relationship. That's why they stole. As someone once said, God's word will keep you from sin. God's word will keep you from sin. And that's true. Or oh, sin will keep you from God's word. That's so true. When you're in God's word, it keeps you from sin because you're always focusing on God's word. Or oh, sin will keep you from God's word. Do you want to crave for his word? First, remember your salvation. Second, remove sin from your life. Then that leads us to the third and final point in three. Refocus. Refocus on the goodness of God. Refocus on the goodness of God. It's so, it's so hard when you're struggling. It's so hard when things are going on in your life for you to focus on what God has done for you. I think over the last few months I've been lucky. Because I've got a woman who always reminds me what God has done. Always tell me what God has done. Always show me what God has done. And she'll sit and talk to me about what God has done for us. He's given me a new life. He wakes me up every day. He's given me time, 90 years, 60 years, 60 plus years with my dad, although he's gone. He's still giving me 80 plus, no it isn't, 60 plus as well with my mom. I was going to say 80 plus with my mom. I'm not the same age as her. Yeah? He's given me all that. He's given me time with my kids. He's given me time with my wife. We focus on the goodness what God has done. If you are struggling to stay motivated in your Bible, read verse 3. Read verse 3. If so, by ye have tasted that, stated that the Lord is gracious. He is gracious. He is gracious. You have tasted goodness. Tasted the goodness from Christ. I've tasted it. It's like tasting when you taste good food. You always want to go back for some more chocolate cake. Let me talk about chocolate cake for a minute. Chocolate cake. 
you make a good chocolate cake, you know something, I'll be back every time for some more. That's why Mrs. Crystal want me around her house, because I, she always makes chocolate cake and she don't want to keep making it. Yeah. Chocolate cake. Eh? We are going away on the 17th. I've got a, a, like some, most of my kids are just like me. We went Costco's yesterday. One of them, my son said, Dad, the chocolate cake in Costco, man, is wicked. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, yeah, no. Well, we could buy it now and take it with me, with us. I said, we're not going away now. We've got over a week to go. Oh, well, we could buy it now and then we could come back and buy another one. <laughs> eh? I'm thinking, no, 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 no. We'll go, we'll buy it when we go, but I don't know. How is going to get to where we're going because it's probably finished by the time we get cake. Good cooking. Who likes good cooking? Oh, cooking. Yeah? Yeah? I love good cooking. Ain't that right, Pastor Grace and Paul? Oh. Good cooking. But when you got bad cooking... You do not go back for any more. <laughs> you do not go back for any more. When the food tastes bad, you do not want it again. Something is not in order. You do not want to go there again. Do you know when you crave for something and, and you go away and you crave for something and you put it in your mind, this is what I want and it's not right? That really hurts. Myself and my wife went away for our anniversary last week. Yeah. We went up north <coughs> to a, for an because the kids booked us and out. We went to the Trafford Centre. We had a walk around. But you know something, Trafford Centre is all right, but it's nothing like the one in, the one in Florida. Isn't that right, Janet? Eh? The, the eating mall around there in Florida, when we take the kids... They got tasters all around the side. That right, Pastor Grits, tasters and T and Cameron, they went round every taster and tasting everything. When we come to buy the food, they was full, they can't eat it. We went out for a meal. They shut Manchester down the night before we go. Told them we was coming. They shut Manchester down. Yeah? No matter where we went to for a restaurant, the restaurant was locked. We just wanted a nice anniversary meal where we sit down with nobody else and just eat and reminiscing about the 2nd of um, August 2003. Right. Sun was shining. Sun was shining. It was hot. Pastor Grid, I'm telling you, he did a good job on that day. Besides sticking his finger in my eye, he did a good job on that day. Yeah. Nissan, we had to satisfy for a takeaway in Manchester. Yeah. Something, something is good, it's good. When something is bad, it's bad. So some of us say, uh, so out of our order in the in the way we view. God's word. Some of us are afraid to read scripture. We are afraid to read the scripture because they're frightened God is going to judge them. God is going to say something to them out of the scripture. Let me mention something. The only thing what God is going to give you is good news. God want you more, more than you, you more than you want to meet him. He loves you more than you could ever think. When you taste his goodness, it lasts forever. Taste a little of the Lord through if you're struggling to read the Bible, refocus on the grace and the goodness that starts 
wonderful time when you first met him, that first birthday of your spiritual grace, uh, your spiritual birth. When you you start gollop, gollop, swallowing his words. When you, you cannot ch choke on it because it's so smooth, it's so nice. When you taste his goodness, you will be your relationship with God. With my brothers and sisters, without God's word, it is impossible, impossible to grow. Without his word, it's impossible to grow. To grow in what you should be growing in. Without his word. When you find yourself struggling, focus on some word, focus on some scripture, focus on some scripture, memorize a certain scripture. My favorite scripture, as, probably, as I mentioned a lot of time, is John 14, let not your heart be troubled, who believeth in me, believeth in him also. You know something, it's so nice, because I am not troubled. Another portion of scripture in which I and my wife focus on a lot. If you're struggling, go to 1 Peter 5 verse 6. Humble thyself there for the mighty hand of God that he may not just a little bit Cast all your troubles. Okay. Upon him, because he cares for you. Probably you turned to your friends and said, your friends care for you, such and such care for you, nobody cares more than the Lord himself. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you again for this time. Father, we thank you for all what you've done for each and every one of us. No one loves us more than we. We know you want us more than we could ever imagine. We know, my Father, that we should be in your word a lot more. But there's times, my Father, we are so wrapped up in what the world is. My Father, protect each and every one of us. And every one of us to be more in your words, my Father. More in your word on a daily basis. More in your word, my Father, each day. focus on one verse so when we are going away from you Name. Amen.